So now that we have our cube moving forward, it rolls a little bit and kind of bumbles around. If we're doing a cube runner, we kind of want the cube to stay attached to the ground and react in kind of a smoother way. So let's start off with why when I run my game, does the cube hit the ground and start rolling all around, right? The reason is because this ground and this object are reacting to the physics engine within Unity. So if we look at our cube, we'll notice that it has a whole lot of just rigid corners, right? So we've got a corner here, we've got a corner here, and when it's falling and it's going to hit the ground, chances are it's going to bounce a little bit, maybe get caught up on one of these corners, and then it rolls down. And that's what we can see if we look a little bit closer. See how it hits that first corner and then just starts rolling off to the side? What we need to do is to make it so that this ground is a little bit less sticky so that when it hits it, kind of like ice, it has the ability to just slide on by. So how we do that is by creating a physics material. So what that looks like is we're going to hit create then go all the way down to physics material. Make sure you select physics material and not physics material 2D. We want physics material because we're working in a 3D space. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to name it something interesting like floor material. In fact, let's go material floor. Now that we have a new material that is floor, so when we click on the material, we have a whole lot of options come up in our inspector window. So there's friction, so how slippery or not slippery our material is, and that's both dynamic and static. So static friction is how much it'll hold on to it, dynamic is how much when you throw it down. Uh, bounciness, so if we have this cube is currently dropping, if it has a high bounciness, it will bounce straight off. So this would be really cool if you're using a player that was maybe a kangaroo or maybe a rubber ball and you wanted it to bounce along your uh, your world, then hooking up this bounciness to being a higher number would be really good for that. So what we want to do right now is just reduce the floor friction to zero and zero. So now that that's set there, so now that we have our material all sorted out, which has zero friction now, we need to apply the material to our actual floor. So how we do that is we go into the floor object in our level, you can see it highlights here, and then we're going to go over to our box collider, which is the thing that checks for when things collide together, and we have this little space here that says material. If I click beyond that, there's mat floor, double click you there, and that's all you have to do. Let's try and see if it works. Ooh, much slipperier. Nice. And that runs pretty straight going that way. All right, so from there, doesn't really need to drop that high. We can drop this thing down just a little bit. Test it one more time. Oh, that's interesting though. Because we dropped the material down, the player down, we couldn't actually see when it started. So that raises a question. What if this level was longer than just what I can see easily within my inspector here. It would make it very hard to play the game because then you can't see the player. So what we're going to go into next is how do you attach the camera so that it follows behind the player. Okay, so please catch up with this section. Make sure you have all of this done and then follow on to the next section, please.